Hello everyone, David Delario from RipenC here to present you the latest RipenC updates. We have been rather busy lately. Uh, we reached the 10,000 members threshold, which was quite impressive. Uh, we're going to expand our regional presence within the region. Our IPv4 transfers have increased. IPv6 is still gaining momentum. And we have improved the website. As you can see on those statistics, the amount of tickets have increased in the last couple of years, which is partly due to the fact that a lot of our new members are not from the ISP community and are not aware of our process and procedures. We established an office in Dubai in 2011. In the beginning, it was manned by Paul Rendek only. And now we have hired two permanent staff for the office. It would be Arabic speakers. We hope to increase the communication with the local community in the Arab world. And a similar satellite office would be set up in Moscow, also with two permanent staff. One thing to remember is that the operations will remain in Amsterdam. Those satellite offices are just local presence. There's a big misconception that the RIPNC has run out of IPv4. It is true that the last slash 8 policy has been activated, but we still can issue IPv4 space to members. Uh, each member can receive one slash 22 allocation, and we have reserved some space for internet exchange points. And our pool is quite steady, actually. It's around 16 million IP addresses, uh, mainly due to the fact that we are recovering address space from closed LIRs or organization that returns space to the ripe NCC. The amount of IPv4 transfers have increased lately, and one of the reasons for that is the post-depletion adjustment policy that was approved. It means that now LIRs do not need to qualify for their additional allocation. They can just request it, and whatever the size, the transfer will be approved. Merger and acquisition has remained stable, which is a good sign. As at some point, it was feared that um, LIRs might use merger and acquisition to bypass the transfer policy, and this did not happen. In our members, we have 70% of our members with IPv6, which is very good. And there's this tiny red part where we have members that have IPv6 only. We look deeper into that, and it's mainly legacy space holders that became members only for IPv6, which is also a very good deployment uh, development in our region. This is the new type of tickets that we have been dealing with, uh, hijacks. Since the run out of IPv4, that we cannot issue more than a slash 22 to our members, we have seen more and more hijacks. They are very well organized, they do their research, they will provide us with fake registration papers, falsified ID documents. We have even seen an entire website being copied from the real holder, registered with a similar domain name. This has created some problems for us, and we need to always try fight to keep a balance between being too strict and too lenient. So we have to work on this a lot. The mainly targets blocks with updated uh, information. So where the email address is not valid anymore, the phone number is not valid. So we really ask all our community to keep their information up to date and monitor what's happening in the right database. For that, they can check through their library portal. They can review all their live database entries and, where possible, certify the resources. That will give you an idea of when something happens. We're revamping the audit process. The old one was considered too heavy by our members. The new one will be divided in three phases. First, we contact the registries, and we ask them to verify all the contact details, name, phone numbers. The second phase, we will check the resources, that everything is registered correctly. And the third one is more a service where we teach them how to use the tools to check their routing consistencies, if maybe they have lame reverse delegation still registered. Uh, RPKI is going fine. We have 20% of our members that have requested their certificates. And a new development is that PI and legacy space will be certifiable in the future. That should be coming in the next couple of weeks. 
We have had a lot of discussion on the mailing list from the right community. The main theme is always that keep the registry accurate, reduce the bureaucracy. The two are sometimes conflicting. Uh, an interesting policy proposal was to abandon the minimum allocation size, which is currently set to slash 22, and has caused problem for allocation transfers when people wanted to transfer just a slash 23 or slash 24. And in the same thing, the transfer policy for PI has been proposed, which will allow PI holders to transfer their resources. At the moment, you cannot transfer PI space. Only if the network has been taken over, then we will rename the name of the holder. And those are not approved policy yet. They are still in the discussion. Our external relationship, uh, external relations department has been very busy. Uh, we attend government roundtables where we promote the multi-stakeholder and bottom-up process. Law enforcement agencies meetings are taking place regularly, and we continue focusing on IGF and Net Mundial, which has been mentioned quite a few times until now. We had a survey with our members, and we identified some points to improve for improvement. One of them is that we will start looking into publishing documentation in more languages than just English. Next week is the right meeting in Warsaw. I don't know if any of you are going to be attending there. It's going to be quite interesting as Rob Bloxell is stepping down after 25 years as the chairman of Wright. He will be replaced by Hans Peter Olin. That's it. Any questions from anyone? No questions? Thank you.